Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials and this is Angular 10 full tutorial series for absolute beginners. So far we have covered about the template driven forms in Angular forms. Starting today we will learn about reactive forms. This is part 59 of the Angular 10 full complete tutorial playlist. I have planned around 100 tutorials. Right now we are reaching close to 60. Um, so make sure that you check out all the previous tutorials. The playlist link is in the description box below. Uh, if we make any notes in this particular episode, that will also be hosted in the GitHub link. So make sure you check that out as well. All right, so following are the topics that I've already covered so far in the series and it's growing a big list. Um, so make sure you check it out so that you learn in detail. Today we are learning about reactive forms. Reactive forms is one of those topics that you talk to anyone and probably they'll say it's complex, it's tricky, etc, etc. But trust me, reactive forms are really fun way and also it's very powerful way to create forms in Angular. Now what we have seen uh, how to build the forms using template driven forms, right? And we have seen that it's pretty straightforward, right? There's no much complexity or logic that goes into building a template driven form. But with reactive forms, it is little bit different. I will not say it is complicated. I will say that it is little bit different in design, right? And that reason being that because it, it is capable of handling a lot of custom validation, custom logic, custom compli like if you have a really complex form, right? If you talk about any banking form or any multimedia companies forms, uh, these are really, really complicated forms because there is so much logic. There is so much conditional things that are going on. So the forms become really, really tricky. And trust me, they require a lot of custom um, design of the form itself. And that's where these reactive forms comes into picture. Also to give you a little bit background in all the enterprise applications that I have seen in my experience, I can tell you everybody prefers to use reactive forms because in most enterprise companies or in complex applications, the forms will be little tricky or complicated. That being said, I will make it very, very easy for you to learn, to grow with me and to learn step by step reactive forms. At the end of this particular playlist of reactive forms, you will be an expert in reactive forms. That's my word to you. Now let's get started with this. So reactive forms make use of Angular's built in. There are two important things that is called form group and form control. These are the two things that make up the reactive forms. We will learn about that in the next episode and how to use them. But today's topic is to understand what is reactive form. Now reactive forms, right? They are, we use, we use data binding in template driven forms, right? Two way data binding using ng model. But in reactive forms, since the design of the form is done in your controller, in your component class, we have the better control of the data, right? And that's the most important thing. We can add regular expressions to the pattern. We can add validations and much, much more. This also helps us in doing custom error handling and exception handling. That's really powerful thing, right? Because if you talk about form, it has to be user interaction has to be there. It has to have proper clear messages. It should have proper error handling, etc. So reactive forms helps us with that as well. To use reactive forms, we need reactive forms module that needs to be imported in our module. One of the most common mistake that people do here is they will create modules and have components but they will not include this particular module, which is reactive forms module into that respective module. They'll just add it into app module and say it is not working. It will not work. You have to import it into the respective module where you are building it. Let's say you have a component A, which is in module A1. You need to include the reactive forms module in the A1 module, not in app module. All right, so that being said, um, so yeah, like I said, it allows us to define, develop complex form requirements. All the logic that we do is written in the component class. In template driven forms, it's written in the HTML markup, right? Like default HTML5 attributes like required, min length, max length, etc. Just like template driven forms, even reactive forms has the state information. Angular maintains the state information of that form. 
So we have the same things like touched, untouched, dirty, mark as red, pristine, valid or invalid. These are used for handling the form um, exceptions like for example whether it is dirty, whether there is error, whether the data was changed etc. Now let's talk about some of the common misconceptions that I keep getting emails on a daily basis. The first one is that reactive forms are really tough. It's not tough. Like I said, it's different by design and that's the intention, right? Uh, if your form is relatively simple, if it's straightforward, you don't even have to use reactive forms, right? Nobody, it's not a mandatory to use, but then um, it makes sense because it's much easy. Unlike what people think that it is uh, tough, it is not tough at all. That's misconception number one. Misconception number two, reactive forms are very complex. Now this is another thing I keep hearing every time that reactive forms are very complex. I don't know it. I am really scared of using it. It's very simple actually. If you understand one simple logic, everything else will be sorted. And that's, that's why I'm here. I will help you learn that basic concept. If your fundamentals are good, you can easily create and manipulate and work with any kind of reactive forms. I will help you with that step by step starting next episode. Reactive forms are difficult to learn and implement. It may seem difficult initially. Yes, I will not disagree on that, but I would say that if you have the right guidance, if you have the right coach, if you have the right mentor, it's extremely easy. Okay. And I'm here for that. Okay. So I will make sure that these are extremely simple, easy for you to learn in step by step way. Now reactive forms are only used for complex forms or complex applications. It's not like that. Like I said, reactive forms are used because they want to have better control on the data, on the data handling, on the error handling, etc. Right. And that's exactly why we use reactive forms. And I will show you in the coming episodes, I will start from very, very basic example to a complex one so that you learn everything end to end. Adding custom validations are tricky in reactive forms. Absolutely not. Adding custom validations is like a breeze. Uh, you would actually enjoy uh, building reactive forms because that's very, very simple. Okay. So yeah, keep those in mind. It's not um, tricky at all. It's very, very easy. It's very, very simple. And I will make it easy for you. Keep doing one thing. Practice along with me. Ask me if you have any doubts. I'm here to help you. All right. That's the only way to learn. All right. That being said, uh, in the next episode, I will start with form control and form group. Those are the two basic elements of reactive forms through which you can start building your reactive forms. All right. So join me in the next episode and we will start with reactive forms with form control and form group. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for supporting this channel and me so far. Keep doing that. Please do subscribe, like, share these tutorials. If you like my work and tutorials, please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash arc tutorials. Thank you so much. See you.